So an interesting subject came up today on my Twitter feed uh, about the age of marriage, um, specifically when it came to marriage for young people and young girls. Now, I look at this not through the prism of the law. I look at it through the prism of the zero aggression principle, which is scrolling past my lower third at various times. And it states that no human being has the right under any circumstances to initiate force against another human being, nor to threaten or delegate its initiation. So by definition, marriage must be a voluntary association that does not initiate force. However, the question comes up when you have respect to how um, young an individual can be to make this voluntary decision. It is particularly contentious, obviously, when you have one of the persons involved is female. So you have to ask, is a girl of age 11, you know, capable of making an informed decision about marriage? Is a girl of 13 capable? Is a girl of about 15? Well, you know, the answer, frankly, you know, if I, as a parent, I would say no, <laughs> probably not. You know, for me, it's more like 18, maybe liar. Uh, but the answer ultimately depends uh, is this. It depends on the individual. Um, there is no real law that you can pass that will cover all possible situations, right? Different people mature at intellectually at different rates. Uh, the role of a parent, that, and this is under the zero aggression principle, the role of a parent, because these you know, young people cannot make informed decisions about much of anything at first. But the role of the parent is to guide the individual's decisions, the chi child's decisions, until such time as they are capable of making their own informed decisions. You know, part of the parent's job, in fact, having done it, I know, is allowing increased latitude for decision making among your children as you believe that they are capable of making those kinds of informed decisions. So if there's a parent who believes that an individual is you know, sufficiently mature to make an informed decision about marriage, then I would have to say that that individual is by definition capable of making almost any other decision about their life. Um, that this might occur at 13 again i kind of doubt that um, as my own some uh, you know experience as a parent i would say it comes closer to 18 maybe a little younger in some cases but not much and frankly even older i'm i'm lucky uh, both of my children are um, in their 20s well into their 20s and neither have married yet uh, one of them has a long-term boyfriend um, so I'm lucky. I think at this point, yeah, you know, they've been on their own so long. They've been making all the decisions for their lives for so long. Yeah, if they want to get married, that's fine. But ultimately, from the perspective of the zero aggression principle, a marriage is a simple contract that has terms that talk about, say, sexual monogamy, financial responsibilities, things like that. And if an individual is capable of forming and making that kind of contract in an informed way, then that individual is essentially self-sufficient and is free to make the contract. And again, this isn't the same as law. For me, law is irrelevant from the zero aggression principle perspective. Um, what we're really concerned about is if an individual can make that informed decision. So if the parent says yes, they can marry, regardless of age. Um, if the parent says no, then the parent must continue to make decisions for that child until that child is able to make informed decisions. Uh, that's part of your job as a parent. <laughs> you decide whether or not your kid has the necessary um, you know, cognition to make an informed decision. But there's also a spiritual component, at least potentially. Um, if a couple wants to marry, they may very well find that uh, in their religion or with a particular religious uh, representative like a minister, a priest, rabbi, an imam, whatever, they may be unwilling to perform a marriage due to the age of one or both of the couples. And if that happens, well, regardless of the parent's opinion about whether the per kid is capable of making this decision, that couple is just simply out of luck. They're totally out of luck. And given the you know experience of the average religious 
you know, figure, or leader, and or you know, priest or whatever, given their experience, if they're going to say no, then the couple is probably better off for it. You know, when I got married, I was I married a Catholic woman, uh, and uh, you know, part of that meant that I had to go to these uh, classes essentially. Um, with my uh, fiance at the time, and half of what they did was try to convince us not to get married. You know, they would just go around and say, "Okay, you want to get married because you think everything's going to be hunky dory and wonderful, but what if this happens? This is really common in marriage. What if that happens? That's really common in marriage. Are you sure you want to do that? Are you really ready to work at that sort of thing?" And so if a priest looks at a 15-year-old girl and says, no, I'm not going to marry you, well, okay, that's probably for the best. There's also a possibility. You get into a possibility where the parent is maybe corrupted by financial remuneration, or maybe they're just incompetent as a parent to begin with. And in those cases, a parent would then be in very gross violation of the zero aggression principle because they have to make the decisions for children until such time as they can make them. So any marriage made under those circumstances should be automatically considered null and void. And frankly, you should try to find another parent for the child who should not have been married so that their development as a human being is assured. A lot of people, you know, really rabid libertarian types. Uh, I'm, I consider myself a small L libertarian, which means that I believe in libertarian principles, but I don't really have anything to do with the libertarian party. And a lot of people want to take that zero aggression principle and simply apply it to a child from birth. And that's wrong. It, it should never be applied to a child from birth. Thank you, Dalton, for letting me know. It should never be applied to a child from birth. Obviously, you're dealing with, you know, an infant that must be cared for, and, and that is incumbent upon a parent under the zero aggression principle, because to do otherwise ultimately is initiating force against that, you know, infant or baby. Really what it means is, as a parent, you make decisions for that child and, and give them wider and wider latitude as they get older until they are at a position where you say, okay, yeah, this is, they're able to care for themselves. And typically that's going to be around the age of 18. Um, but you know, sometimes, sometimes it's older. Um, sometimes it never happens. Um, there's lots of people out there who should not be making their own decisions. Uh, but what can you do, you know, beyond a certain age? And if you weren't around before, by the way, I am celebrating here uh, with a wine glass with my... Uh, High V brand white grape, naturally flavored uh, sparkling water beverage, which I cannot show to you because <laughs> the uh, thing is the same color as my green screen. Uh, but I'm using that because, as uh, Wilford Brimley once said, I got the diabetes, so I can't do anything that's got alcohol and it's got too much sugar, so I'm toasting with this thing. And you'll see me do it from time to time. But you shouldn't be applying uh, the zero aggression principle, just blanket. You, you have to say, all right, the parent has the uh, responsibility under the zero aggression principle to make sure that that child grows up in a way that they're capable of making informed decisions for their entire life. Um, that's the whole point of a parent is to make sure that the kid that you brought into the world winds up being well-adjusted and capable of making decisions for themselves. So ultimately, is it, uh, is, it, uh, is it appropriate for a young person to marry under the zero aggression principle? Yes, provided that the parent whose job it is to ensure that their child can make informed decisions about their life determines that that child is capable of making such a decision. And that's where I generally stand on that issue. Um, you know, I think what you were seeing, uh, Dalton, in uh, there was a couple of the really rabid libertarians who wanted to just say, yes, uh, you know, no matter how old they are, they can make the decision. And no, that's not really the case. Anyone who's been a parent knows that your kid ultimately is not capable of making a lot of decisions for themselves until they get to be older. Your job is to prepare them 
to allow them latitude as they get more emotionally immature and can make informed decisions. MXWS, great to see you here. Your question, do you think having kids makes a big positive difference in a man's life? Or is it possible to have a completely fulfilling life not getting married and not having children? Well, let me, uh, let me just uh, close off what I'm going to be using here as, a, uh, as this is a clip because um, that's going to get into a, uh, a number of other things here that um, I may want to take out as clips on themselves. So uh, let me just finish off that zero aggression principle stuff and I will go back to my um, regular uh, um, lower third here. So, uh. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.